Thanks for staying with us. So we'll just go straight into what we found in the news. Okay, I'll come to you first. What did you find for us in the news today? AK. All right, so let me come to you, Lami, um, before okay. we get back um, AK's connection. Yeah. So what do yes, you find? Go ahead. Okay, the PTF, the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19, is meeting the idea of um, embarking on, not embarking, actually, trying another lockdown on Lagos, Abuja, and Plateau states. Mm. <laughs> they said the state are the super spreaders. So I think what they are trying to do is they don't want to do a general lockdown, mm. but they're trying to target probably local government to lock it up. I am just imploring, I am begging them not to try it. Why? It's going to come with severe backlash. Don't forget that if the lockdown worked the first time, why are we going into a second one? Mm. If it did not work, why are we going to another one? Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. It severely impaired people's businesses, children, mental health status, women, businesses were, you know, so you now want to embark on another one. So what do you propose would be the best solution to handle? Okay, Uwa, as we are speaking, churches are still open. Mm -hmm. Gatherings, parties, people are going to parties, Owambe, every weekend. Mm. They didn't try to stop all that. At least target, you know, where the large gatherings are. Mm. And probably maybe coffee or something. But to now totally lock down the economy, it is going to have a severe backlash. Mm. And, and these people are just hypocrites. When Isa Pantami went on his insane party, insane directive of Nin and all that, like oh, okay, there was the an Nin, emergency, oh, mm. the Minister for Communication yes. or Digital or whatever he said, the PTF did not say anything. I, 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 I really do not understand the kind of federal government, the kind of government they are running. There is no coordinate, coordination. And but they were speaking from another side of the mountain. The PTF was saying avoid large gatherings and all that. Isa Pantami, who was Lord on his own self, was saying something else. And, and they couldn't reconcile. So that is Don't why, they sit together? So that is why these yeah. your churches that you are saying, and yes. these other people will not want to take any... Um, That's the the because the government in itself... itself they, they're they, Confucianists. They are seen not to even obey their own rules. There's so much division within Ooh, this the mean state. Thing. You know what could you have done? Just technology. Put your details, everything on the internet. Enter your details on the internet. Then if we say have to do your biometrics, which has to be physical. On appointment. Thank you. you is it not visa? simple? Is it yes, not now. simple? Why do we have to make things hard in this country? Just give everybody 15, 15, 15 minutes mm. every day. In two, three months, they will exhaust the number of people mm -hmm. that want it done. Absolutely. Well, I just... Me, I'm not going to another lockdown. I should not try it. Too. Ah, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll just relocate with the other, another local government. <laughs> Let okay. me with you. Okay. Come in, please. Okay. So my story is actually linked to our topic today, our discussion. Hmm. I'm taking from a vanguard. It says... Full of me being persecuted because of Buhari. Mm. And this was said by Sule Lamido, a former governor of Chigawa State. And he said that the full of me were being persecuted because the country does not like the president. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't know if you've been following the news for the past uh, two weeks. You would find out the several complaints about you know, the activities of the headsmen and the full of the people to be specific especially in the um, southwest region. And the governor of Ondo State, um, Governor Rotini um, Akerundu, has given, he gave a, a seven-day ultimatum. And also somewhere in, I think, in, in Ibadan, Ibadan also, yes. also an ultimatum for them to, by Sunday, and they want to leave a particular area in you know, your state. Now, what, what, why did I bring this up? One, apart from the fact that it related to what we're talking about, is that Lamido did not see beyond the activities that these people have been accused of. Hmm. Instead, he's lacing them with the fact that because they are related to the president, that is why they have been persecuted. I just think it's very shallow. I have people are say. suffering, people are going through things, and you know the kidnappings are real. These things are happening. And the only reason you could come out to say that... Um, the people that are taking the actions are taking the actions is because they don't like the president. I think mm. it's too shallow. Hmm. No, it's too, you know, it's my, just too shallow. I can't remember because of time. Sorry, let me cut you. 
My take on this issue is I don't like the precedent, and that's the truth. And as a Nigerian, it's going to be very hard to like the precedent because this is a man who has favored nepotism. So all the appointment keeps going to the northerners. So is it not easy for someone not to like the president? So what's he saying? It is easy for me not to like the president because so, he has favored so a particular me, set of... Let me, my, yeah. let, me, let me just come in. So my, my take is, it's okay not to like the president. I'm not saying love the president. But you cannot situate and encapsulate a whole problem that a certain people are going And you just reduce it to, to just because they don't like the president. president. That is a very, very... Uh, what's the president called? that keeps quiet when all this it's is It's not happening. even that. Uh, it's, a, it's a very evasive way of handling issues. Hmm. Because you are trying to just limit it to say, oh, because they don't like me, that's why Can they are imagine? doing this. I mean, I think, well... In the myriad of problems... We'll talk more on that when we're having our conversation. But my story is actually good news. It's a bit of mixed feelings for me, but it's good news. Um, it says, um, several missing Chibok girls, school girls, escaped from Boko Haram. Um, this was uh, on CNN um, Instagram page. I found that some Chibok girls um, that were abducted nearly seven years ago have finally escaped from their captors. A father of one of the girls told CNN, she said, she asked me, is this my daddy? Is this my daddy? And she started crying. Oh my goodness. The, um, the crying was so much that I couldn't even hear very well. I was crying too. I never expected to hear from her again. again. That's from one of the father, Ali Meyanga. That was what he <sighs> said. I mean, so wow. for me, I'm so happy. I am so happy that um, they have been, you know, uh, reunited with their family. I mean, seven years, uh, that's a lot. Was that seven or six? No, seven years, that's really? a lot. Yeah, seven years ago. Like joke. Was it 26? <laughs> like joke, yes, yeah, seven years ago. And so for me, wh why, I mean, why I even chose this story is we just um, relieved service chiefs, right? Hmm. And girls are escaping. <laughs> and all of a sudden, <laughs> girls are escaping from their captors, from Boko Haram. So I'm wondering, okay, is there something, is it tied to the fact that maybe, um, I don't know if there's a new security, my, uh, my, my um, what's it called? that has given them the, the capacity to be able to do that? You my, know, why now? Why it's so apt just today? My take on it is, um, irrespective of the fact that I'm happy, I'm mm. elated that um, the girls have, some of them have also been released from captivity. How? Who are you just said seven years? Mm. How are they going to get reintegrated into, into the, the society? society? Are they going to go back to education? Are they going to marry them? That's off? seven years. It's seven years of you being have, in captivity. You should have oh, finished your living with people school, who are not human Finished your beings. university and done about two masters with that. Do you time. understand? Yeah. These people who have been dehumanized, mm -hmm. their humanity has been taken completely away from mm. them. I think the federal government needs to take over those girls and I hope so. I them. hope they do that. Um, AK, you want to add something to that, or we we'll just move on? Yes. Uh, yes, I was going to say that in any um, same client already, there would be a program mm. that these girls will have to go through to be able to, um, you know, find a way to fit them back into the society. I think there needs to be like a psychiatry evaluation. They need to talk to a psychologist because it's, it's a lot. Just imagine people that have been kidnapped for one or two weeks and they come out and they tell you they are traumatized. And then you're talking about seven old years. There, there needs to be, I agree with Lami, there needs to be a program that these girls will go through to get them settled, to get them even to begin to just, you know, embrace society and live well again. Absolutely. Absolutely. So today we're discussing tribal um, bias and the impact on the economy, right? I mean, this is something <laughs> that has impacted the economy. You know, <laughs> imagine all those it's number of girls of out all the of school. That school will shut down it. because there's no economic uh, activity going on in that school. But we'll take a break, right? When we return, we'll have our conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.